Today we're going to look at JavaScript's weak map and weak set data structures. To be honest, until relatively recently, I didn't understand how useful these could be, but I saw a really great use case recently, and we're going to take a look at that today. If you're not familiar with weak map and weak set, think of them as a variation on the standard map and set data structures. The main difference is they're meant to store as their keys in the case of a map or their values in the case of a set. They're meant to store objects that could be garbage collected and that really you think will be garbage collected. The idea is once those values are garbage collected, their corresponding key value pair in a map or just the value in the set will also be garbage collected. So the fact that they are part of this map or this set uh, doesn't create a strong reference to them, hence the weak part. Now, I understand why that might sound a little bit abstract and not particularly useful, but let me show you the example that really worked for me. The example that we're going to look at here is a simple express app, but you can imagine really any type of HTTP server. And as you can see here at the top, I have both a map and a set. And these are for tracking request stats. This is particularly useful in TypeScript, I find. Um, we're not going to do this in TypeScript, but it's useful in TypeScript because we're going to be using the express request object as the key in the case of our map or just as our uh, element in the case of our set. And this is neat because it allows us to track some metadata. We're using the map, of course, to track some richer data. And in the case of the set, this is kind of like a Boolean flag, right? Is it in the set or not? And so we can track this strongly typed in TypeScript data related to our request, but we don't have to change the type of the request. If you wanted to start adding these fields to your request and also keep that strongly typed, that can get a little bit weird in TypeScript if you're trying to mutate an object type as you go through several different pieces of maybe like express middleware or just as an object flows through a set of functions. And so storing this data elsewhere, like in a weak map or weak set, is really useful because a request object, almost by definition, is relatively short-lived, right? It should be an object that exists and is passed through your system, then is garbage collected once the request has been responded to. And so we can use a weak map and a weak set to track these stats during the lifetime of the request. And then once that request is garbage collected, we know those values will be garbage collected from our weak map and our weak set. We don't have to worry about these objects becoming bloated over time, and we don't have to manually clean them up. So in my simple example here, we're using this for some metric tracking. You can see we have uh, responses that we want to track. We want to know whether it's a successful response, an error response. Maybe it's an expected error response. Or really, I guess we could call this like a client error response. And then also we want to do some latency tracking. Very simply, was this request fast or slow? We have um, an initial piece of middleware here in Express that just sets up our request timer. So we just store the current time, the start time. Uh, and notice we use the request itself as the key. So once this request is garbage collected, this key value pair in our request timer's weak map can also be garbage collected and will be eventually. Here's the main like kind of mock business logic for our little example here. We've got three of our cases. You can greet a particular name. If your name is Andrew, it's a client error. If your name is Danny, we're adding some latency and responding. Otherwise, we'll respond with whatever the name you pass through is. And this is an unexpected error. So notice we're tracking this as an expected error. Um, now, I did say client error, which is typically 400s. Um, maybe there are some 400s that are unexpected. A lot of us, I think, are working on applications where we build both the API and the client. And so there are some errors where if the client is getting that error, eh, it's probably because you made a mistake in the client. That's a bug you need to fix. And so maybe you want to track some 400 errors separately. And so that's the main sense, the main piece of our business logic. And then we have our metric tracking in a couple of pieces of middleware at the end of our application. So you can see we figure out whether this is an error based on our status code. We also figure out if it's an expected error by reading this value from our map. Now, one thing that you can notice here, but if we look at week set, you can see we really only have three methods, add, delete, and has. Now, if we look at our set object, you can see there's a lot more that we can do here. Basically, you can loop over all of the items in this set. In a weak set, that's not something you can do. We see a similar thing in weak map, right? With weak map, we can set and get, we can delete, we can check for the existence of something. What we can't do, if we look at the map definition, we can't get entries, we can't get keys, we can't get values. Basically anything, again, that requires iterating over the full set of values. Because we don't keep a strong reference to these, the map can't really know how big it is or what its full contents are. It can only tell you whether or not something exists if you ask specifically for that key. So that's kind of the both the, the limitation and the power of the weak map and the weak set, right? It doesn't 
keep track of everything that's in it, which means you can easily garbage collect values. You don't have a memory leak, but also you can't iterate over it. And honestly, if you need to, not the right use case. Okay, so you can see here, we're just incrementing a metric tracking for responses. And then this is for latency. We can pull our start time out of our map, get the full request latency by uh, diffing that. And then we just s increment whether this is a fast or a slow request. Uh, and then a very last piece of middleware here just prints out our app metrics after every request. So again, a really simple, very basic example, but I think it shows the power of the weak map and the weak set for keeping track of simple metadata. I will point out in the case of TypeScript, right? This is definitely something that we could uh, strongly type. So this could be, I guess in node, this would be an incoming message, I think. And you could have like a request metadata object here, and you can use both of these as strongly typed data structures. Again, this is really powerful for adding metadata to an object that you cannot really, in a strong way, change the type of. So let's see this in action. Start up our server here. I'm just going to curl it on this side. So if we start by curling Andrew, uh, we can see we got a 400 here. Track this as an expected error, and it's a fast request. If we do Tom, Tom is going to be another fast request, but this is an unexpected error. Let's see, 400. And then if we hit Danny, I have that up to a one second delay on Danny. And so we can see we got a successful response there. Let's do a few more Danny's here just to show what this looks like over time there. And now we can see the four successful requests too fast for slow. That is our simple example of how weak map and weak set can be used to track metadata for, uh, in this case, an HTTP server. If you guys have other examples of how you've used weak map and weak set or other great places to use these data structures, let us know in the comments. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you guys later. Yes, this is kind of a new studio thing I'm playing with. I hope the audio is good. That's one of my main concerns in this space. Um, but also, I don't know, maybe there's some fun room here to do something with, um, you know, <clears throat> with uh, who knows what. So thanks. I'll see you around.